Hello guys and welcome to another ITSense video. My name is Faisal and this video is about setting up Active Directory site in Microsoft Azure Cloud for disaster recovery or DR scenario. Uh, well, uh, this is the top, but it doesn't have to be DR. It could be your another secondary Active Directory site or can serve any purpose. Bottom line is in Microsoft Azure is possible that you can extend your existing network like your data center and and have a presence in microsoft azure and microsoft azure cloud can be in another active directory site where you can have your additional domain controllers that belongs to a same domain or maybe a create a child domain and have domain controllers there or whatever bottom line is microsoft azure cloud provides you complete flexibility that either you can use Azure Active Directory service, which is a service provided by Microsoft Azure, or use AD Federation services, or use AD Connect, uh, you know, to to sync your directory services. However, Active Directory uh, service, Azure Active Directory services, or AD Connect, although they can sync your user in groups and and they provide you certain services for authentication. Um, an authorization however it's not exactly your 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 own active directory uh, your active directory your on-prem active directory have your group policies have your security permissions have your security settings as well as you may have some uh, you, you, permissions for file and folders so in your Microsoft Azure cloud, you may have not only a domain controller, but you may have some application server that takes authentication from your build from your on-prem Active Directory, or you may have file servers or other resources that uh, you assign permissions to your on-prem users and groups. So, uh, for that purpose. Uh, uh, definitely on-prem Active Directory provides you uh, better flexibility for managing your own objects and that's the point here that you can protect your active directory or have a disaster recovery site set up in Microsoft Azure cloud and that's what I'm gonna do in this video uh, let me show you lab topology real quick um, if I can get this diagram yes I have an on-premise network and I have some servers and I have a server running domain controller 192.168.1.200 192.168.1.0 is my local on-premise network and then I have a routing and remote access server that will establish a site-to-site -site VPN site-to-site -site VPN by creating an IPsec tunnel between the on-premise network and Microsoft Azure network on Microsoft Azure, I will define a virtual network called 172.16.0.0/16, and then I will define a subnet called DR subnet 1, 172.16.1.0/24, and then what I'll do, I will provision another domain controller, DC2 over there. Before that, of course, in your Active Directory, you need to create another Active Directory site. For example, you can say Azure DR or whatever. I will call it Azure, and then I will create a subnet in Active Directory Sites and Services and associate this subnet with that site. And once the IPsec tunnel will be established, it will be like a communication between two networks. All the communication will go through uh, back and forth. Then all I will do provision a server here uh, add it to a domain and then promote that server to an additional domain controller and that domain controller will detect that this site has a presence in Active Directory as as an additional site and it will be placed on that subnet. I will create site-to-site -site VPN as I said uh, IPsec tunnel between on-prem network and between the Azure network. As I have a home lab, I don't have a static public IP address, uh, but there is a trick that you can, if you want to do this uh, testing at home, all you have to do, get into your router, get your public IP address, and what you can do, 
once you define a local VPN gateway in Azure, use that public IP address and whatever IP you will assign to your routing and remote access server, which of course belongs to this network, you can add it to your router as a DMZ host. And then you'll be able to do that. This DMZ host settings usually available in all type of home routers, whether you have Netgear, Netcom, Linksys or whatever, the setting is very easily available. All you have to do, just whatever IP you want to assign to the routing and remote access server, define it there. For example, I have a photo or photograph of of a, of a router of where you have this net DMZ host settings. And as you can see, I have enabled the DMZ host settings and I specify the local IP address of routing and remote access server, which is 192.168.1.115. And this IP I will assign to this routing and remote access server. After that, I will be able to establish IPsec uh, VPN tunnel between Azure VPN gateway and this routing and remote access server. So that's pretty much it, and let's let let's start with uh, implementation.